Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX and thank you for joining me on this video. Now, ever since I started uh, doing these videos on YouTube and particularly ever since I did the sort of unboxing and overview of the ICOM ID52, a question I keep getting asked is all about D star. How, why, what, how do I, how do I get on it? All of those types of questions. So that's kind of going to be the subject of this video. What is D star? How do you get on D Star? Even if you've got an older D Star radio, I'm going to try and cover that as well. So stick with me. We're going to start with a very, very brief history of D Star. So D Star was developed back in the late 1990s by the Japanese Amateur Radio League, or JAL. In around 2004, ICOM were the first manufacturer to release a D-Star radio. In fact, they released two that year. The first was the ID-1, which was a 23cm single band D-Star radio, uh, which was unique at the time because it also had an Ethernet port on it and using the fast data mode uh, incorporated within the D-Star protocol enabled you to create a long distance I suppose LAN, to be honest with you, uh, over 23 SEMs. Something that was unique about the ID1 until only a few years ago when ICOM launched the IC9700. The second radio they released in 2004 was the IC2200H, which was a two meter single band FM D star radio uh, supporting digital voice and the slower D star data specification as well. Uh, a year later, they would follow that up with dual band options, both handheld and mobile. That's about as much history as you need to know, to be completely honest with you. So let's talk about how D-Star was back in the day. So back in sort of the mid to late 2000s, what did the D-Star network look like? Well, it's important to remember that D-Star was designed as either a simplex mode i.e. to kind of replace FM on a simplex communication or a simplex QSO or using the very infancy of the internet in doing point-to-point -point links and that's kind of how D-Star was imagined over the internet so you would use your friend's call sign in the your field of your radio and the link would be made for the length of time of your over so if you were to say put your friend's call sign into the your field of your radio um, and then key into your local repeater the d star network would find where your friend was last seen on the network and put your qso out or put your uh, over out through his nearest repeater or the repeater that last heard him the other option you could do was to put the call sign of a repeater and then you would make that bridge to that particular repeater as well in exactly the same way it was clunky. It technically still works with the proper ICOM system, but to be completely honest with you, that's not how D Star works now. So it was seen that something had to change with D Star and something needed to happen to make it more user friendly and that could generate QSOs without having to individually try different repeaters. And thus the reflector system was thought of. So with the reflector system, you can connect your hotspot or your repeater to a particular reflector. And any call that is put into that reflector is then retransmitted by all of the nodes and hotspots and repeaters that are connected to that reflector. But there's more than one reflector system. So there is the REF reflector system, the XLX reflector system and the DCS reflector system. Now, they're all D-Star reflector systems, so you don't need to have any additional hardware. If you're using a hotspot, your hotspot will work with all of them. And if your repeater is MMDVM based, that will work with all of them as well. If, however, you're using an ICOM repeater, as in an, a, a repeater made by ICOM that will only work with the REF reflector system. So what is the difference? Well, they're just different networks. So in the same way that DMR has Phoenix and Brandmeister and Salop and DMR Plus, which are all different networks, the same thing happens with the REF, XLX, DCS reflector systems as well. But as I say, if you've got a hotspot and that's your access point into the D-Star network, then it doesn't matter. You can use any of them because your hotspot will work with them. So let's just presume you've got a hotspot, you've set that up, you've put your call sign into it, you've connected it to your Wi-Fi network and you're ready to connect it to a reflector. 
And let's just say that you have an old D-Star radio. Let's say, for instance, maybe you have the ICE-92D or the IC-92AD, as it was uh, outside of Europe, and you want to connect your hotspot to the reflector system, but only using the radio, which can be done. Well, there are four fields in your radio that you need to get right, and these are the call sign fields. So there's your or you are, there's RPT1, there's RPT2, and then there's my. Let's look at these one by one. So the your or you are field would have been where you'd have put your friend's call sign in the days before the reflect system. Nowadays, it's where you enter the command to your hotspot or your repeater, telling it what you want it to do with this transmission. So let's say we want to connect to REF001 Charlie. Well, we would simply put in REF001 Charlie and then L for Lima, which will tell your hotspot to link. So REF001 CL. That will tell your hotspot or your repeater to, to link up to Reflector 1 Charlie and you should get an audio message come back saying linked to REF001 Charlie. That's not the only thing you can do in that field though. You can also have commands for information which is all blank except for the last character being an I. You can have unlink which is a, similar to information which is all blank except for the last character being a U. Or you can have CQ, 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 which is what you would need to set your radio to in order to actually use the reflector. RPT1 and RPT2 kind of go together. That's going to be the call sign of either the hotspot node or repeater you're using, followed by its port letter. Now, there is some convention to this, but do check if it's not your own hotspot with the hotspot owner or node owner or repeater owner to make sure you are aware of which one they've used. The convention is, is that port A would be for 23 centimetres, port B is for 70 centimetres and port C is for 2 metres. Port D isn't really used. So, if you have, say, a 70 centimetre hotspot, the convention would be that you would have that as port B. So, for instance, in my case, my hotspot would be M0JSX space space B. Now, those blank spaces are important because the port letter has to be in the very last character field of that box. If you have it anywhere else, it won't work. RPT2 tells the repeater or reflector that you want to access the gateway. So that last character field there is going to be a G for gateway. That last field of my call sign is fairly self-explanatory. That's your own call sign. That's your personal call sign. So again, for me, that's going to be M0JSX. And then you have a slash. And you can then put up to four characters after that slash. In my case, I tend to just put in the model number of the radio I'm using. So if I'm using the 705, I just put in 705. If I'm using the ID52, I put in ID52. But you could use that as an option to be stroke mobile. You could use that as a place to put in your name or an abbreviation of your name. Uh, if your name is Gary, for instance, you could put in G-A-R-Y. That's entirely up to you and there's no real convention to that. So I think it's time to put all of this into practice. We're going to use the IC705 and pretend it's an older D-Star radio that doesn't have the DR functionality. We're going to come to DR mode in a minute. So let's hop over to the 705 and have a look at what this looks like in action. So now I'm sat in front of the IC705 and I just want to say that if you do have a 705 or any of the modern ICOM radios that happen to have the DR mode on it, this isn't the way I recommend doing it. I do recommend using the DR mode for those radios. Uh, we'll go into that in a little while with the 705. It's the same process though on pretty much all of the DR mode radios. If you've got an older radio though that doesn't have DR mode, this is going to be the way to do it for you. First thing to do is set up the radio on your uh, frequency of either your repeater if you're near a repeater or your hotspot if you're doing it with a hotspot. I run my hotspot on 4386875 uh, which is absolutely fine it's uh, away from the satellite part of the band which is the bit you've got to avoid 
it's not the recommended hotspot frequency, uh, which is 438.8, uh, but I happen to have another hotspot on 438.8 for DMR, uh, so I use uh, 438.6875 for my D-Star hotspot. So first thing we've got to do is make sure we're in the DV mode. So up here on the D-Star, on the 785, um, make sure we're in DV. Next thing to do, and this is an important step that you may not um consider is that you have to put the radio into the repeater duplex mode even if you're in a hotspot so even if your offset is zero you've still got to set up that so on the 705 i'm going to go to function dup and turn it on you can see mine's already set but you need to reset it just press and hold on the 705 uh, do check on your radio on the ice uh, on id52 for instance you've got to scroll through it all uh, but yeah, make sure you've got, it doesn't matter whether it's plus or minus, by the way, as long as you've got a shift, but the shift is set to zero. Next thing we've got to do is to actually, it sounds a bit stupid, but we've got to hit the PTT button. Because what we've got to do is we've got to, oh, sorry, remote menu, call sign. We've got to populate these fields here. So uh, these are the four fields we're speaking about, your R1, R2 and my. We'll come back to yours, your in a minute. We're going to leave it at CQ, CQ, CQ. R1 and R2, DSTAR has a really clever thing that if you uh, hit the PTT and you're getting into your hotspot or repeater, the repeater will reply with what those settings need to be. So I'm simply going to pick up the microphone, hit the PTT button, and I should get an answer back from my hotspot. Doesn't always work, doesn't want to work on this occasion, so I've got to do it again. Uh, there we go. So now it's going to come back and it's setting RPT1 and RPT2 rpt2 for me so if i go back into menu back into cs we can see it's populated now it hasn't quite populated 100 percent correctly so this r2 is almost right but instead of b that needs to be g for gateway so if i tap on it and go gateway there we go so we've got m0 jsx b m0 jsx g and you can see mike also down the bottom m0 jsx slash 705 how i set it up so we're almost ready to actually link up to a reflector at this point. All we need to do is go into the your field and I'm going to press and hold it to edit. And this is where we need to know a little bit of commands really about D star. So as we said earlier on, I want to connect to, let's say, reflector one Charlie. So I'm going to type in REF001 Charlie and L for link. So REF001 Charlie link hit enter and I can go back and I can again it's all to do with hitting the PTT button so if I hit the PTT button that will should link me and I should get link to REF001 Charlie so I get that immediate feedback that I'm linked to reflector one Charlie so now let's say that we wanted to unlink the reflector so you go back into menu back into call sign and we're going to again change this so we're going to go edit we're going to clear this all out remember i said earlier it's that last character space it's the eighth position that gives the command so i'm going to tap space seven times and go one two three four five six seven and in the eighth space i'm going to put u for unlink i could put that as i for information but i'm going to unlink so i'm going to hit enter and we can see that the UR field is now an unlink. And I would simply hit the PTT and it would unlink for me. Not linked. So it's unlinked the reflector. Finally, if I actually wanted to have a QSO via the reflector and in a linked state, I would just go back into that. And in this situation on the 705, I can do this, which is just to tap that and go CQ, CQ, CQ. Alternatively, you would have to type in CQ, CQ, CQ. In this configuration, whatever the hotspot or the repeater is connected to, I'm going to transmit to. Finally, on radios that have the DR mode, I could probably do a whole different video on the commands within the DR mode. But let's just look at it very briefly. So... The DR mode is a really handy feature. On the 705, it's accessed by pressing and holding the call button. And it does this really nice feature where you can do the near repeater functionality. So you can see all the nearest repeaters to you. Um, but it's built 
specifically for D star in primary. So I've got a, I've already got my hotspot in there uh, on 438 and I can easily do this. And this is the advantage of using the DR mode on a uh, DR mode capable radio is that it has all of these clever bits in there for me. So I can link to reflector. Now uh, I can either direct input a particular reflector if I wanted to. So let's say, yeah, 58 Charlie link to reflector 58 Charlie. It, it auto generates it. And then by using the multi knob, I can easily go back to use reflector. But how do you get that in there? I hear you ask. Well, it's a very simple process. It's easier done via a computer running the free CS uh, software from ICOM, depending on your radio. It might be free, it might be paid for. Uh, it's free for most uh, newer radios, things like the ID51, uh, the IC705, the ID52, the IC9700, all free. If you have an IC7100, though, unfortunately, ICOM do charge for that software. But you can also do it on the radio itself. So if we go into menu, and then we go into DV memory and then repeater list. We can easily see our repeater list already. So I've so I've already got that in there, but let's just say I wanted to copy a channel. So I can go add um, and I can name it. So I'm going to go test. Uh, sub name is also test call sign. Now here's the uh, interesting thing is it's not going to let me put in my call sign again because I've already got a channel in there with the call sign. So I'm just going to put in my 2E0 call sign just for the sake of argument for this particular section. Um, so 2 0 pj Oh, lovely. Um, oh, hang on. I've missed a port letter. So, um, so let's just say I am on 77. So I want B. Again, that needs to be in the eighth position. So 20 VJO B, gateway call sign, it's already worked out for me. 20 VJO G, in hotspot. Uh, frequency is going to be, uh, let's put 438.8. And DUP, also duplex, we do want, but the offset frequency, again, we're going to set that to zero. Position you can worry about if you do want to put a position in for to have it show up in that near repeater functionality. I don't bother when it comes to hotspots. I do when it comes to repeaters because it's really useful. Hotspots, I don't bother. Uh, again, UTC offset uh, if you are in another part of the world. And then add right. Yes, done. So you can see I already have that there. Um, it's sat nest between the two I already had. So if I go uh, back into Oh, I've got to go back to the, the main screen. If I go back into the DR mode and then go through, so if I go to repeat a list, hotspot, test, there we go. I can see my test one has already appeared there and populated from the radio itself. So the final question really is where do I go in order to get a QSO? Well, Reflector 1 Charlie that we've been talking about today and we've been using in our sort of demonstration is a really good port of call for you to try. It is the most popular D-Star reflector, but it's not the only one. The problem with one Charlie that I personally find is that you get a lot of people just keying up because it's the place where everybody goes to start with. So you get a lot of key ups and your radio spurts out a lot of call signs, but sometimes there's not actually that much happening in terms of a QSO. Uh, I often find that Reflector 30 Charlie uh, is also very popular, but doesn't tend to get the same level of key ups that one Charlie gets. There are others. 58 Charlie is another popular one. I know it gets used a lot of the time, uh, but do check out. There's a really handy website, which is dstarusers.info, uh, and that's got a last heard functionality. So that monitors the REF system doesn't monitor XLX or DCS, but monitors the REF system. So it will enable you to find some activity. Just look up on the little chart as to where someone is transmitting and, and chances are you'll be able to find uh, someone to talk to. D-Star is a great mode. It's been around for a long time. It's not the only digital voice mode, as I'm sure aware, but it's probably my favourite. So we have, I hope that was useful. I don't claim to be a D-Star expert, uh, but I do 
I do claim to be a user and sort of know my way around the system uh, to some extent. Uh, I do have an idea of a video to actually build a digital voice hotspot using a Raspberry Pi and an MMD VM board. Uh, do let me know if that's something you'd like to see, uh, sort of the process of how to actually set your own hotspot up. Uh, I'm sure it's been done to death already, but uh, do let me know if that's something you'd like me to, uh, to tackle as well. Until next time, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. 73. Bye-bye.